of the connection. Now look at what he said. Are thou Ziba? And he said, yes, I am. And they said, okay, I know the key of house of Saul is in your hand. You are the only surviving servant that remained when Saul and Jonathan died. You refused to relocate because of them. You refused to resign your work, although you are not paid. You refused to do your duty, although other people ran away because the royalty ended. Now tell me, do I have any other person that I can assist in the lineage of Saul? Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? It was the crippled boy that was left. Look at the situation of the guy. Huh? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son, which is lame on his feet. Other translations say crippled. And, uh, and the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Meher, the son of Amiel, in Lord Deba. They live in a village called Lord Deba. I pray for you. Whatever level of Lord Deba in your life, it will be located by history. Amen. Amen. Then the king said unto him, Out of the house of Meher, the son of Amel, from Lord Deba. Now when Mesibozet, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on where? On his face. Huh? And did reverence. And David said, Mercy said. And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said to him, Fear not. Do you know why he said fear not? He thought they will kill him. And he said what? Fear not. Every one of you that is here, there will be a day somebody will tell you, Don't be afraid. For I will surely show thee kindness. For Jonathan's sake, thy father's sake, I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread on at my table continually. From zero? From zero? Ladies and gentlemen, some of you, you are looking for 1,000 naira. And you are a millionaire in the future. In this context now, from Lord Deba, a young man came out to be recognized by the presidency of Israel. Prime Minister David <laughs> invited him. I pray for someone who is listening to my voice. May you be located because of this prophecy. Amen. May your story change in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say you will be eating continuously at my table. For the sake of who? Jonathan. Before I pray for you, I want to remind you of one thing. How many of you know why Naaman was healed? Naaman was healed because of a kitchen girl who was washing dishes. She was picked as a slave girl, but became the exit to Israel. The last person you saw at home that her father died. His father died. And he's an orphan. And you walk around and you never consider that person. That person may be a prime minister tomorrow. Don't look down on the destitute you see. Don't look down on the uneducated in the, in the society. Don't look down on the less privileged that pass by you. Don't look down on those that you see around you. Because I want to tell you ladies and gentlemen. The key to what you are looking for may likely be in the hands of that person you passed yesterday. Your uncle's son, your daughter's child, your brothers, your brothers and your aunties. From Lodeba to Jerusalem. From zero to hero. God knows how he lifts people. You may be twisting and whining that I don't have money. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have house. I am not married. I don't have job. But have you thanked God that you are breathing? You may be the least expected in your home. But don't be afraid. Sometimes they may look down on you. Don't be afraid. What happened here was that 
Ziba became crippled at the age of five. His father died. His paternal background had been closed. He is the leftover cycle of Saul's family. But the seed that his father saw became the reason for, his, for him to relocate from Lodeba to Jerusalem. I want to pray for people today. I want to, I want to give you or share with you the power of love. How to love. Too much love in your life who can heal the sick. You can sit down. When there is no love, there is no cure to any sickness in this world. The psychology of the spiritual also, love is the psychology of the spiritual. Do you understand that? People may say bad things about you, but don't look at what they are saying. Don't calculate them on what they are saying because they are entitled to their opinion. Don't give up when it is on God's issue. Don't give up. It may be a hard time like Ziba and Mesibotet were having. They were having the worst day of their life. From being in presidency, now you are in the village. It's the worst day of life. But they have never given up on God. Until when a voice was heard from Jerusalem. On the national television of Israel. That please, if there's anybody that knows the location of anybody who is associated with, let King Saul. We want them to come quickly, please, because there is a problem that is needed to be solved immediately in Tel Aviv. I mean, in present Jerusalem. And all of a sudden, a crippled guy was coming. They said, this is a great grandson of Saul. And David said, for your, the sake of the love of your father. Let me show you this. Come. There was a day. Watch here. There was a day David and Saul and Jonathan, they were looking at each other face to face. And they said, let's make a covenant. Do you know who suggested the covenant? It was not David. It was Jonathan. Jonathan was clever. He said, the throne is not my father. Because the way my father has been fighting all this while and is not winning any of this battle, I knew the throne is you. And he said, let's make a covenant. When you become exactly what you are to be, then make me the chief of defense staff of Israel. Since I am already a trained warrior. And he said, oh, that's okay, that's okay. You come from a different family. I come from a different family. For you accepting me, though, from a poor background to come to presidency and to be your closest friend, even reminding me that your father is trying to kill me, I will make a covenant with you. And they courted a covenant. The covenant was like this. And the Bible says, they became a soul to soul something. So the guy died in the grave. But love didn't die. Brothers and sisters, the most common thing the church ignored today, they thought love is just an ordinary thing. It's not an ordinary thing. Real love can stand even beyond the grave. Yes, sir. Sit down. How many of you, you want your love level to increase? You want to increase your love level. Can we do it now? Can we do it now? Stand on your feet. How many people are here you want to give your life to Jesus? You want to be born again and you are saying, Prophet, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Can you run and come here? Run and come here if you want to give your life to Jesus. Anywhere you are. Even if it is one person. Come. I love you. Come please, if you want to give your life to Jesus, wherever you are, please come quickly. Love is the most important thing. Love is the most important thing. We live in a days of payment and rewards. But I want to tell you, great people, they write history in love. The beginning of that is by giving your life to Christ. By giving your life to Christ. The more you give your life to Christ. There's a song I was singing the other day here. I say, more love, more power, more of you in my life. Did you see that? More what? More love, more power.
Can you say this word after me, please? Say, God in heaven, forgive me of all my sins. I come to you in Jesus' name. Write my name in the book of life. From this day, I'm a Christian. By faith, I confess I will serve him for the rest of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.